Hello everyone. Uh, our today's video is about C. Spiracy. Uh, C. Spiracy. Don't know me. Uh, my name is Sunny, and I am an aquaculture expert with specialization in the fish feed. And uh, in this video, we will be mostly discussing about the aquaculture related issues which has been uh, raised in this documentary uh, so without taking too much time i would say that please open also the cspiracy website where you have the fact section i have went through the references and we will go through these references and i will also play this in the meanwhile the video so that we can also uh, discuss it uh, at the same time uh, so please uh, open the website and uh, let's uh, jump in so I will play directly from the aquaculture part uh, this video um, and here I have also opened the, the research papers they have discussed so let's go in Yeah, so uh, what this fish has been fed, so this is a most important question and very important question uh, to start with. Uh, so if you open these references, so they are uh, also um, related to this, uh, they discuss about that the fish has been fed with the wild catch fisheries uh, and dried fish meal and fish oil. Um, so this is where we are going to start. So maybe let's listen what they are saying first. Yeah. yeah, so this is a claim. So they have discussed about FCR. So FCR, they talked about 1.2 is the FCR. And then they have discussed about that there, need, there needs a lot more fish uh, going into the fish feed uh, compared to what comes out. So this is uh, uh, a big claim. Uh, and if you really go to that uh, the fish site article which they have uh, uh, quoted and you should also check that tilapia stitches some that article that document you should download it and open it so you read that through so i don't understand that uh, why this has been considered as a negative thing uh, by the way, because this uh, the, the fish site article is actually discussing about a lot more in detail and and here he has just cherry picked uh, one of the information related to the FCR and also start to discuss about the lot more uh, fish has been used uh, from the wild catch uh, in the fish feed, uh, which is absolutely not correct. Uh, so if you really see that uh, they have also yeah, that like lot more fish, like five to twenty, uh, five to twenty kilogram of fish has been, has been used to produce one kilo of salmon. So that is not absolutely uh, correct. It's far from it. Uh, so to produce five, um, to if to produce one kilogram of fish meal, you need five kilograms of uh, uh, fish. Uh, the forage fish. The forage fish is kind of fish which is not. Uh, being used by the humans directly and this is unfit for the human consumption uh, so this is called the forage fish and five kilograms of it gives you roughly one kilogram of fish meal and five kilograms of it give you roughly quarter liter of fish oil and that fish oil is actually uh, not being used somewhere else because it's animal feed grade especially 
it's unfit for even the human consumption um, and then it this these ingredients are then being processed and put it in the feed and in the present day feed you have like um, only 10 percent of the uh, in uh, the fish uh, meal is included in present day feed and which is also on the downward trend and because a lot of this fish meal is going to be replaced by the new ingredients which which are coming in like microalgae and insects and single cell protein and other ingredients like that so this actually claim is not right i wish that before they are coming up with these claims with an article which is 10 year old they would have been also understanding what is really going on in the industry today rather than digging something which is 10 year old and which does not catch up with the facts of today so but of course this topic is quite big and uh, on aquaculture tribe this channel we have a series of videos related to the fish feed um, and aquaculture facts so you should check the, those videos we will have it in the description so that you can also take a look in that and then you understand it uh, more deeply and in case you have questions so please ask those questions you can comment or even contact me so then we we can discuss further on but overall related to the uh, this uh, fish uh, it's 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 very exaggerated what they have actually said in this documentary so let's uh, move further so, so one of the thing is very important that actually you should read all these two documents and you will see that is this arguments they are presenting in the doc, uh, documents are they the supporting arguments or are actually the negative uh, arguments you will find it out and it will be quite interesting uh, to know your opinion also uh, in this so let's move further so the fish Yeah, so when they said this is disguised, uh, it's it's very uh, wrong claim. So this is not the wild catch fishing in disguise. I mean, look at the scale of it. Uh, we are discussing about 10% of the fish meal in the fish feed, which is forage, forage feed, uh, which is uh, not suitable for the human consumption. And so and then of course they are talking about 50 percent yeah so 50 percent of uh, uh, the fish which is coming from the aquaculture shouldn't we saying that this is actually uh, achievement which uh, the fish farmers had achieved in the last 20 years um, and this is i mean we should celebrate this achievement as something that uh, the farmers have achieved uh, and there is less pressure on the wild stock fisheries today compared to 20 to 30 years ago uh, with this number so it is a quite positive number and I think we should appreciate those people who have contributed to this number rather than saying that this is something negative again another thing which is positive but uh, which hasn't been mentioned in the right way so let's uh, move further. Huge pigs in the ocean including tens of thousands of fish. So we decided to leave Liberia and journey back to the UK to stop one of the world's leading producers of foreign talent. Since none of the major companies were going to do Yeah, so before uh, that, so uh, this big cages he's talking about here in the documentary of course they have to live in the big cages and uh, uh, this is called domestication of the animals or the farming uh, in general this is called the domestication the same way you domesticate the uh, plants for example you have wheat and corn and soybean and the other plants so you first you domesticate them and then you are able to farm them this is what it is so salmon farming or the other types of farming they are all domestication of the animals uh, to produce the food uh, in a farming way and when it comes to their cage conditions one of the thing I would like to mention here um, is that 
the fish in the water uh, is actually given a lot more space compared to the animals we raise on the land and this is something you should really understand and this is called stocking density you should google it what stocking density it and you will find out that the fish uh, have a very positive uh, 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 numbers related to uh, <coughs> related to this um, uh, stocking density so we move further from now on Yeah, so <clears throat> we first discussed about the sea lice. So sea lice um, is a natural phenomena uh, which actually uh, is very common in wild uh, salmon and it is like the natural uh, lice which uh, actually uh, which is actually having this relationship with the salmon uh, like as a host. So they live on salmon body for and rely on that for their food and uh, so it's it's really like misleading in a way uh, to just show one picture uh, which is uh, like cherry picking you if you have like thousands of cages and then you can just have one fish which is sick uh, and which happens to be sick and then you have that picture which you can of course use uh, like to say that the whole industry is like that so if you discuss about the regulations of today there are specific numbers uh, which are really close to the nature uh, that you cannot have uh, the sea lice more than the certain extent at your farm otherwise you cannot really even uh, sell your fish so it's very regulated highly controlled uh, uh, like uh, the rules made by the veterinary authorities and the local uh, authorities really uh, actually uh, put huge pressure on the farmers to fulfill uh, those regulations so this is to say that uh, the sea lice is a uh, is like everywhere that is not right and and let's move further Mm. Yeah, so again another outlandish claim uh, where they are actually coming up with the number so I checked into the reference you also please check into the net reference so they haven't really come up with some scientific paper so it's mostly like a news article where they are talking about this and and uh, because and, and also there is another thing you should consider this is organic waste and this organic waste uh, there are now technologies available uh, which are actually converting this organic waste into the fertilizer to be used in the field and even this uh, organic waste when it goes into the sea if you see the most of these farms they are actually along the coast and they are not really into the deep sea and the waves are not that strong there and they really just go down and it's like a sludge and you can actually collect it and clean it up and and dry it and use it as a fertilizer so this is like uh, you can say I don't really see a scientific article mainly backing it up so I think that's enough for this let's move
Yeah. Yeah, diseases comes later. So so here he discusses about the high mortality. So this is very interesting topic again. Uh, so to put this into perspective, uh, you have uh, in the in the wild uh, in the uh, many wild species uh, even salmon they have very high mortality in the wild and when the the, the fish have actually babies or like the, these small eggs uh, in many species you have the survival rate of actually only five to ten percent uh, it's a huge number they are actually uh, presenting here because this number is absolutely not correct. Uh, Fifty percent is a huge number. It's impossible, literally, to run a fish farm with, or uh, this cycle of farming with fifty percent mortality. Because fifty percent mortality means a big loss financially, and at the same time you are saying this is billions of dollars of industry, and at the same time you are thinking like the farmers can just make the living with fifty percent mortality. So this does, doesn't really make sense. So yeah, I can say that the mortality uh, happens. It is the part of uh, farming. It is not like the mortality does not happen. Mortality do happen. Like uh, mortality happen with all other ways of uh, farming animals. So it's pretty common to have mortality. And if roughly I want to put a number there, so I would say even having 20% mortality is a big number. So it's really depend on region to region, farm to farm, and the season. So you cannot really come up with a certain number in this thing. And here I think they have they probably have some, I, I looked into the website of this person. So it's an it's a activist, anti-farming activist, uh, this person. And I saw that, that he has put some data which is very vague and uh, don't know from which uh, timeline and maybe he, he oh, and of course he is working for for years against farming so he have his own uh, special point of view uh, and this is really does not speak the over about the overall reality of all the farms uh, of salmon or other uh, species so far from being a yeah, so here he's saying like this uh, thing which is very interesting related to the disease and tell me a farming method, even plants or animals or whichever farming we are talking about, which is uh, disease free and waste free. I mean, you have diseases in chicken industry, pig industry, cows, uh, you have uh, even in plants you have uh, the diseases don't you see that uh, the the cotton the clothes we wear um, the cotton industry they also have diseases uh, even our potatoes have diseases all the things we eat all the plants we eat they do have in, uh, this problem of diseases and that's why we have these scientists working to solve them and you can say something you can improve with the passage of time but you cannot say like you uh, this is just the big, big load of problem and we should uh, kind of, this is everything negative. It's not everything negative, of course. Everything is improving uh, from last few years in every industry. The diseases, the, with, with the research, it's improving. So, so let's move further now here. Yeah, so this is my favorite because this has to do with uh, fish nutrition. 
So if you see, they are saying this painted pink. I mean, this is very funny uh, because uh, if you see astaxanthin, they are saying. So astaxanthin is an antioxidant, which is actually good for you, for your health. It is very good uh, uh, ingredient. And if you are saying that astaxanthin is bad, then you also have antioxidants in other foods, for example, grapes and red wine. So you cannot like, you cannot say that this is just the color painted. And in case you are discussing about this uh, color paint, I can give you the example related to the egg yolk, for example. So if you have egg yolk and if you have eaten the uh, check the egg yolk color, it also varies sometimes. Why it varies sometimes is because of it's based on the feed ingredients. It's based on the, uh, the the color of the corn, the chlorophyll coming from the corn. So this is really like it's cherry picking in a nutshell. Uh, so of course, uh, the, and and oh, another thing, you should check the references they have given on their website related to that. So if you open that uh, reference. You will see the first thing and that's written like it exists naturally in crustaceans and uh, the fish so if you really like kind of want to cherry pick you should really kind of come up with some good reference it's not like this reference you can come up uh, who can support uh, and uh, the argument at the same time and at the same time oppose the argument so you should uh, look for yourself this is really interesting and uh, let's move further. This is a real most of the lots of fun. The environment will wipe the farming green life clean and it's devastating. One of the world's most important habitats is mangroves. And mangrove covers absolutely crucial soil health. They protect communities. Yeah, so this mangrove part, I'm sorry, I, I don't understand this too much. This is the first time I actually heard from this, uh, uh, from this documentary related to this issue. Previously, I thought this mangrove is something to do with the deforestation. And uh, like, like, I don't understand this subject enough, sorry to say that. So I, I wish I should. So, but let's move further. However, it's the shrimp fish which is having the greatest humanitarian impact because it's adding on slavery. Yeah, so this was very strange, actually. We talked about the fish uh, shrimp feed and its impact it's like on slavery so i know slavery is an issue slavery is an issue in agriculture slavery is an issue in literally every human aspect wherever they can uh, have it so this is like governance and social issue but i didn't actually understood why he attached that to the feed of uh, shrimps uh, i i maybe they should have explained more a slavery is an issue and it should be solved and it's like the issue which is related to governance has nothing to do with the nutrition or the farming practices. I mean slavery is bad in any form. Let's move further. We hear a lot about blood diamonds. This is blood shrimp. Okay. Bloody shrimp. Okay. This recent aerial footage shows a fishery in Southeast Asia licensed to put an to the throne. Yeah, so here from the shrimp feed, they have jumped suddenly to the fisherman and which is two different things because the shrimp is actually farmed uh, in the ponds, not at the sea. So I think they have a plot here which have some issues. So, so I think this is the most of, uh, I, I hope I have covered most of the things and in case there is something which is unclear so please also uh, comment um, and or reach me out uh, and other than that i will actually put a lot of um, uh, links in the description of this video so that you can really dig into for, for yourself because if you really see the fish feed industry overall and generally the these practices has really uh, improved over the years yeah, especially in the last 10 years and in one of the video actually I also discuss about the, the the journey of sustainability which is taking place right now which actually deserve your attention 
should look into this and see that what are these new ingredients and a uh, new wave of ingredients which is coming into the fish feed and making it more sustainable and this you should check it out and related to the fisheries part i don't have to be very honest much to say as many other people have discussed about it but one thing i should say that this msc is an organization which is actually helping uh, the people to kind of have the sustainable fisheries and not all the fisheries in the world today is actually either sustainable or actually or having the MSc certification so if you should actually strengthen these institutions and actually help them so that they can uh, be uh, they can be actually their, their policies or their way of doing things should be practiced widely in the industries rather than actually you put the blame on them that they are the devil's advocate. No, they are not the devil's advocate. So I'm also not the devil's advocate, by the way. So I'm also trying to make sense of it. And that's why I say like, we should be really looking at these issues more rational, rational perspective. And we shouldn't really kind of uh, let this uh, rhetoric or uh, this uh, uh, kind of irrational behavior uh, come in. So food is important, sustainable food is most important uh, issue of our species and we should be very careful and responsible coming up with the uh, conclusions. And in this uh, documentary, the conclusion of please don't eat fish, I mean, isn't it lazy? Are we not educated to always improve our practices and trying to find the solutions? What are the innovations for? What is the, what is the kind of function uh, of, a, of a educated uh, society? Is not to just kind of uh, draw the like, okay, these two sides is either good or bad. I mean, we have to find the middle way we have to find the sustainable solutions and that's what we are all striving for and coming up with this conclusion that we should just stop eating fish is pretty much like saying if alcohol is bad so let's ban the alcohol smoking is bad let's ban the smoking and if the is i mean and the and then we are also saying fish come on we are this is neither coca-cola or neither alcohol or neither uh, smoking this is something a, uh, a food and this is the food which is uh, responsible for giving so many people in the world with good quality protein and rather than improving and rather than working along these uh, fair industries uh, coming up with the outlandish allegations against them and actually it's it's very it's very uh, it's not right i would say and i think we should uh, yeah we should all strive for better and it's right not all the industry practices are good and there is a lot to improve and i think we should give the right credit to the things which are right rather and we should really check what uh, positive aspects of every food system are so i think for today thank you very much i hope i didn't took so long but if there is something please uh, send a comment or write the message whatever way you feel comfortable and thank you very much thank you bye bye